Good morning, everybody. Uh, good to see you all here. And um, I'm Jeroen Trichler. I'm on the board of directors of OSGEO. What I want to do today is we've, we have a couple of other directors here uh, and have some discussion about uh, OSGEO and what it means for Fosfogy. But I want to start with thanking Tynes and the whole team of organizing this event, which is really fantastic. I was saying yesterday, Fosfog gives us a chance to go to places where many of us would never go. <laughs> and to actually see places that are so fantastic and beautiful that I, if I would have known in advance, I, I would have gone. <laughs> but this is a, it's a real pleasure. We've been uh, enjoying uh, Yesterday, the terrace is in the center, and uh, so thanks for that, thanks for organizing, um, and thanks for the city as well. So, the Open Source Geospatial Foundation was uh, something, maybe I better ask, who didn't hear of OSGEO uh, yet, or just encountered the name, but doesn't know what it, what it actually means? Can I see hands of people that are really new to OSGEO. You all know OSGEO, okay. <laughs> so there goes my talk. Um, <laughs> so the Open Source Geospatial Foundation is, is a foundation, a uh, non-profit foundation, uh, to support open source software in the geospatial domain. <coughs> it's been established in uh, 2005, to, to, 2006, more or less, uh, and uh, since then has been supporting, I think, most of the, of the big uh, open source geospatial software. Our mission is to foster global adoption of open source geospatial technology. And uh, we are, as a community, an inclusive and open uh, place community-driven, and so by all of you, basically. We are an organization that provides infrastructure, uh, legal support if it's required, uh, and a little bit of money here and there, and going to cold sprints, uh, making sure uh, events like this one or other, the global uh, Phosphor-G can happen. Um, infrastructure, as I said, uh, money is going to those kind of places. Uh, projects that need to do an upgrade of something that nobody is interested in funding uh, can also apply for some funding. Uh, OSGEO is an independent legal entity to which you all can contribute code, you can contribute funding or other resources that you have, just your time uh, invested in uh, commissions, committees, uh, helping organizing things. It's all voluntary driven. We don't have any employees. And one of the guarantees that the foundation gives you is that your contributions will be for public benefit. And we think this is critical in the whole uh, purpose of OSGEO existing. OSGEO is volunteer driven. We are uh, what is called duocracy, meritocracy, uh, whatever you want to name it. It's a fairly large community. The structure of the, of the organization is that we have uh, all of the people that want to be part of it, but there's a bit of a formal structure as well uh, in that we have a board of nine directors including the president, who is probably online. Hi, Angelos. Uh, not here in the room, and others. Hello, raise your hands so people know who is on the board. Ariel. <laughs> so we are with five people here. Uh, don't hesitate to talk to us if you have anything to contribute or want to wanna make sure OSGEO evolves. We have uh, charter members, and those, that's the elected membership. And if you have contributed or you feel you have things to contribute, you can be put up for uh, election, uh, proposed as a charter member, and the charter members can vote for you to be part of that membership. You don't have to pay anything, you just contribute time, 
uh, enthusiasm, energy, and so on. We have sponsors, uh, people, sometimes individuals, companies, uh, organizations, um, but also local chapters that actually contribute a bit of money to the foundation. Then we have uh, committees, committees like the marketing committee, incubation committee, uh, the infrastructure uh, people, and some others. Uh, and you can be part of those as well. We have foundation projects, uh, projects that have been in, that are kind of the core projects, software projects. Uh, we also have more community projects that are you know, in, we have to see how sustainable they will be, and there's all these processes of, of looking at how sustainable a project is before they become foundation projects. This is kind of a, a stepped approach in accepting new code and new software projects. Then we have a lot of, uh, or maybe the officers first, each of the foundation projects and of the committees also have officers that are kind of the formal representatives uh, in, the, in OSG as well. And then we have local chapters, country uh, instances of OSGO that may organize a Phosphor-G conference locally, or like here, organize a European one, a North America one, Asia one, Oceania. Uh, usually those are taken on by local chapters. Membership. And the way it works, it's open, free membership, no payment to be made, uh, just indicating that you would like to contribute is enough to be a member. So you're here, you're probably a member of OSGO. Sign up to mailing list, take part in events, uh, help out in projects, send pull requests, bug reports, help with documentation, participate in the code sprint in the weekend, we have over 35,000 people on the, or unique subscribers to our mailing lists. Uh, this was last year. Uh, Self-declared membership, so add yourself to the wiki. Uh, and we currently have over 1,500 people uh, on that website. The charter members, I've, I've talked a bit about those. They are elected yearly after nomination by other charter members. And when you are, a charter member, you can actually start voting for uh, the board elections. So there is that mechanism as well, more formal part of the of OSGO. And the board of directors elected, and uh, we have up to nine directors with a two-year term, and they kind of rotate. So there's four being replaced one year, and then the next year five, and they can be re-elected, but. Uh, it's kind of to keep the thing going. So we also have some challenges, and that's the main reason why I'm here. So I wanted to introduce OSGO, but you all knew, so that part of the story uh, is gone. I really wanted to get your involvement, and that is because we have a number of challenges in the, in the foundation as well. We need a number of changes, probably, to keep the, uh, the foundation running sustainably. One of the things, one of the ideas is to reinitiate what is called an OSGO Europe chapter. So we have local chapters in most of the countries in Europe, uh, but we really think we need a European umbrella uh, chapter uh, as kind of a legal entity as well. Um, and there's reasons to have that European chapter, and I want to highlight some of those and then look at the way forward. Reasons to have an OSGO uh, Europe chapter are, for instance, uh, to help us understand the impact of a big regulation at European level that's coming uh, or that is existing. Uh, but is also partly still formulated is the Cyber Resilience Act. Um, I think what we need in OSGEO is a formal support 
to our projects and to our community that can help us understand the implications of this regulation. Uh, we want to assist uh, with organizing Phosphor G Europe from, a Euro from an OSGO Europe perspective because we see that you know, also these regional conferences start to happen fairly frequently. And we need a financial support vehicle for European level sponsoring and funding. For instance, from European Union, ESA, those kind of uh, agencies do not really want to contribute to one local chapter, but would like to see it you know, be part of a Europe chapter. Um, and then a European chapter can help uh, enhance collaboration and networking within Europe. So the way forward for this, please participate in what is called uh, Bird of a Feather Sessions. There will be one uh, today, six to seven, uh, focusing on OSGEO Europe, uh, but also on Phosphor G Europe uh, 2025. Uh, get yourself some extra drinks, some energy, and uh, join that session at six o'clock today in, I think that is this room, right? Yeah. So here, the only thing you have to do is, is come back at six here. Uh, you can sign yourself up on the wiki and then get involved in, you know, what is needed for an OSGO Europe, what is needed for Phosphor G, etc. Et on the Cyber Resilience Act, uh, there's another bird of a feather session. Tomorrow, same room, same time, uh, there's Marco Mignini there, hello. <laughs> He's from the EU, from JRC, and also interested in, com in you know, discussing with us uh, and, and part of the community, but, you know, interested in having that discussion going. So again, sign up, uh, join the session, and uh, we can move on with that. Uh, OSGEO sustainability, so this is a bit more of a, of uh, an organization thing. We have committees and they need you. We have a marketing incubation committee, system administration committee. They are fairly poorly uh, manned. They really need new people to be involved and help out in the project. If you've been in OSGEO for a while, incubation can be a really good place to help and assist. If you uh, are just enthusiastic to spread the word, join the marketing committee. Uh, raise your hand. <laughs> marketing. Um, so please join OSGEO committees. Uh, OSGEO projects, they use infrastructure, have cold sprints, need to fix vulnerabilities, uh, join the projects to actually contribute code. Uh, we need to discuss Phosphor G Global. How do we want it to be inclusive, uh, rotate across the globe, and still be sustainable? Uh, those, those really have financial challenges, and we need to talk about sponsors, the way their involvement and their money uh, can be used, and also uh, how they benefit in a proper way of, of the sponsoring they provide. So, almost done. <laughs> um, yeah, I have enough volunteer time, that's a challenge on committees. Funding mostly depends on the Phosphor G Global at this point for OSGEO Global, which is really a challenge and I think we should change some things in the way that is operated. Uh, and how do we make Phosphor G Global and the regional Phosphor Gs like Phosphor G Europe and North America and so on complementary and not competitive. Uh, way forward, participate in Bird of Feather sessions. The one of today is a good one to be involved in. I thought of setting up another one, but it will compete with the time of today's and tomorrow's Bird of a Feather uh, session. We can do this also online. Uh, and my idea is to have this move around the globe also. Uh, so also have a similar discussion in, uh, in Belém. Uh, set up working groups, make plans around these topics, and involve local chapters and members around these topics. So, 
Thank you. Uh, please join us and uh, hope to see you these days.